That's my best friend. That's my best friend. What's up, guys? How you doing? Dave Mo, Dave Mo Flips. How you doing? Uh, I'm not at my home or my mobile office or the office today. My uh, my house flooded back in October. So clean water, fresh water flood. And finally now the insurance company, myself and the, some other individuals got together and were able to get that done. So I'm actually out here at a Airbnb. I love this place. Got the family with me. Nice little staycation. But anyway, so the video. Let's get right into it. A lot of people, I'm getting a lot of um, emails asking, what is it that I do in regards to the cars? This will probably be one of the last times I do uh, a video like this. because I don't want it to be redundant, but I do want to help people. And it's easier just to help like this. So what exactly is an authorized agent or a dealer rep in Honest, in all honesty, all it is is you have the right to use someone else's license, a licensed bonded dealer, to buy and sell cars. So, step one, find a dealer that wants a dealer rep or an authorized agent. You will then work out a deal with them for X amount per month and X amount per car. My deal is three fifty a month. That's no matter what. I pay three fifty a month. Then every time a car sells, I give them two hundred dollars. Now this particular dealership that I'm at collects that two hundred from the buyer. If for whatever reason the buyer does not want to pay that two hundred, I have to pay it. But it is built into the paperwork. So they're not looking to get 200 from me and 200 from the buyer. They're looking to get 200. Who it comes from, it doesn't matter. For their reps, like myself, they try to make it come from the buyer so it doesn't hurt us. So once you find a dealer who wants an authorized agent or a dealer rep, as I refer to it as, you'll negotiate your monthly with them then you'll probably have to negotiate your per car with them, and that's the 200. What I try to do is I try to, I try to stay away from dealers that wanted the 200 up front. I like this deal. When you go to a dealership and they want you to rep for them, and they're like, okay, every time you buy a car, you have to give me 200. Uh, they're probably going to double dip on you. What do I mean by that? They're going to collect 200 from you for buying the car. And then they're probably going to collect some dealer fee from the, the, the buyer of the car from the dealership. So, so does that make sense, guys? I'm going to buy the car from the auction. I'm going to pay 200 to the dealer because I had the privilege of using their license and buy the car. Then when that car sells, they're going to collect another amount of money, whatever it might be, from the buyer of the vehicle from the dealership so that's why i think that's double dipping with that being said uh if that's the best deal you could do then that's the best deal you can do and that's just how it has to be um are there other fees all right so i was asked uh you know for a fee breakdown yes there are other fees that i do have to pay and I think I went over this in another video, but it was like mixed in with a video. So this video is going to be dedicated to dealer reps, authorized agents. I pay for my monthly $350 a month. I pay $200 a car. We just went over how they get that $200, okay? Then I pay $25 any time that dealer has to physically write me a check or ACH debit, okay? Anytime that dealer has to do either of those two things, I have to pay $25, okay? If I wholesale a car, if I buy a car from the auction, I sell it at another auction, I am responsible for the $200 because they still get 200 for their car being sold. 
there is no buyer. The buyer is the, you know, another dealer at the auction. So keep that in mind. Anyway, three fifty a month, two hundred per car, and uh, twenty five dollars anytime they write a check. Now, this one is kind of weird. One car. Let's just say we have a two thousand and eight Honda Accord on the lot. I'm not there. The uh, someone comes in, and this is how they do it. Okay, they don't have a salesperson. They don't believe in it. They don't want to do it. I, I don't know. So the way they do it is, if someone comes up to the lot and they come to the office, like, hey, I'm interested in seeing that 2008 Honda Accord. What can you tell me about it? Their response is, I can't tell you anything about it. That's one of the guy's cars, but you're more than welcome to take it for a test drive. Okay. They'll take a copy of that person's driver's license and hand them the keys to that car. If that person takes that car out and they come back and like, okay, I want to buy it. I'm going to offer X amount. They'll know what my lowest amount is for the car and they know the asking price. If that offer falls into that, you know, um, how, how would you say that? In, if it falls in between my lowest and what I'm asking, then they'll just sell the car and do the paperwork. That costs $50, okay? Just by handing them the keys and doing the paperwork, it's $50. Now, if I sell it myself, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about that 50. If they showed that car, handed those keys 10 times, but I'm there and I hand it to someone and and they buy it from when I'm there, I don't have to pay the 50. Keep that in mind. So, again, I'm going to keep going over it, guys. $350 a month, $200 per car, $25 for a check or ACH debit, and $50 if they sell the car. Keep in mind, they're basically handing over the keys, saying they know nothing about it, letting the person test drive it on their own, coming back to the lot, that person makes an offer and then they'll do the paperwork. Still a good deal, I believe, to sell a car if I'm not around. This one is different. I did this one myself. I went out and I hired a salesperson. Okay. I pay that salesperson $150 per deal. That salesperson takes pictures of the cars, but actually I take pictures of the cars. <coughs> Excuse me. I like the way I take pictures. I take pictures of the cars, but they would take pictures of the cars. I clean the cars. They would take that car to the car wash and vacuum it out, but I like to take care of that stuff. Um, the main thing is they post all the free ads. Your Facebook marketplace, uh, I think OfferUp might still be free, all that kind of nonsense. I don't care about any of those. They do that. What I do is I pay for um, like Craigslist. So I'll post the car on Craigslist, but with their phone number, okay? They handle all the phone calls, they handle all the paperwork, they handle the deal, they handle everything. And for that, when they sell the car, they get $150. Now, this is kind of, it's kind of messed up because they, they have time invested at this point, right? Let's just say that same 2008 Honda Accord has been shown, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 times by that guy. And when I get there, I sell it. It just so happens that, that the salesperson's not there. I'm there. I hand the keys. I do all the salesman stuff. They buy the car from me. Technically, per our deal, I am not required to hand that person anything. Okay? But remember how I told you guys. It's a lot easier to, to keep people happy and keep people loyal if you do the right thing. The right thing in this instance is they've posted the ads, they've handled phone calls, they've, they've shown the car, and it was just the luck of the draw that I happened to be there and sold the car. Could I be a better salesman than them? <clears throat> sure, absolutely. Are they a better salesperson than I am? Sure, absolutely. It doesn't matter. There's a bunch of variables that could have went into it, but the black and white of it is I sold that car to someone they've never seen before. But the man that I am, I still peel off 150 for the sales guy, for the salesperson, because 
I want to keep them loyal to me. I want to eh, screw the loyalty. It's the right thing to do. If they show that car and put work in, they should get paid. I hear you. I hear where you're coming from. Well, throw them 75. They don't get the whole 150. I get what you're saying. And I might. If I don't make that much in the car, I might throw them 75. They, as far as I'm concerned, should be happy with anything they're getting because they don't, I'm not obligated to get them anything. So, how did I find my dealer? Honestly, Craigslist. I went on Craigslist and I typed in a bunch of different ways. I put uh, Mannheim, I put auction access, I put dealer rep, I put authorized agent. Um, I did it in all for sale and I did it in services. I just kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. Um, for me, my guy's right here in Tampa Bay. So it's not, I'm not breaking the law. This isn't the Arizona deal. The reason why Arizona got fucked, guys, just so you know, got screwed up, is because they were letting people from other states do come, not even come, they were just signing them up from other states. And when they bought cars, say I bought a car from Tampa, they were getting the title only, endorsing the title to whatever name that they gave and then gave the title back. Or they were having them do Arizona paperwork in different states. That's a big no-no. You can't do that. Even if you bought a car on eBay, you still would have to have a proof of the ad. They'd still have to come down and do the paperwork at the dealership in Tampa. Now, very rarely will you find someone who says, I don't want to do that. I'll overnight them the paperwork to their state. They'll fill it out and I'll get it back. And then they have to have the car transported from the dealership. It's very rare that that happens. Very rare. Um, how did I know the guy was trustworthy? I didn't. I really, I, I, did, not, I did not know that they were trustworthy. I did not know that they could, they, I did not know that they would not leave with my cars. I kind of took my time. I took my time. You know, I, I didn't buy a whole bunch of cars at one time. That would be worth it for someone to shut down a dealership. I noticed that there was other dealer reps there. So in actuality, the company that, that I do business with, they're a car dealership. But the, company that, but the company that the man, the owner runs is a repping company. He makes his money from guys like me reps, authorized agents. He's not really out there trying to sell his cars. Will he buy cars? Sure. Every now and again, he'll buy a car and throw it out there, whatever. But the majority of his money comes from guys like me. Actually, yeah, 90% of it. Okay. Um, he's very rarely there. I see him maybe, you know, once, once, once a week. He comes, he picks up the deals at whatever time he picks up the deals. He runs the deals through the title agency that he uses. And then he comes back with a stack of deals and the reps have to go through the deals, find their deals, contact the client, tell the client to come pick up any paperwork, or if they didn't need anything, just file it away and you're done. That's how he runs it. Um, I would, if I was you and I was looking to become a dealer rep, I would look at the dealership. Are there other reps there? Look at the inventory. Try to do the math. How much money do they have in the inventory? Because, you know, if they have fifty thousand dollars in inventory, they're not going to go out of business and take your car. You know, a five thousand dollar car it doesn't make sense, right? But now, if they have fifty thousand dollars in inventory and you show up with a three hundred thousand dollar Bentley, that might get their wheels turning. You see what I'm saying? Also, you should have a contract in there. So let's get to the contract now. All right. So those are some of the things that I looked for when I was looking for my dealer rep. The contract, um, I'm not going to give my contract out, guys. I know a lot of you have asked and, and I've really given it some thought. There's just a lot of stuff on there that's very, you know, uh, personal. Um, my personal information's on there, my social's on there. I, I could block it out, black it out. But um, this gentleman that I do business with, he took a lot of time to do this. And what I can do is I can tell you this. In the contract I have, it says, the cars that I purchase are mine. The dealership has no rights to them in regards to paying off debt, nor can they just steal them from me. If they do, we can take the owner to court. Um, that was huge. That's one of the biggest things you want, all right? Keep in mind, if there's a rainstorm 
if I'm in Florida, if there's a hurricane and a tree falls on my cars, they are not going to run them through their insurance. They're not going to do it. They're, they're just not responsible for it on that. They're not going to hit their insurance like that. So that's another thing. And I, I'm okay with that. You know, believe me, we're getting into storm season now. I'm parking my cars far away from trees, guys. <laughs> I'm going to front. Um, I park it far, far. There's one big ass tree. Uh, I'm nowhere near that tree with my cars in case that bad boy comes down. Chances of it coming down, slim to none. That thing has been there for years. You could tell by the size, it's well rooted. Um, but anyway, make sure you, the contract that you get protects you. It protects your cars, it protects your investment. It protects the fact that the ownership is yours. Even though the dealership owns the car, you have the right to sue if you have to. Because they could sell that car and not give you any money. That shit happens. Believe me. It, this is not safe. <sighs> getting into this, you don't know who you're getting into business with. Also, see how long the dealership's been in business. All right? So going back to that. See how long the dealership's been in business. If they've been in business for 10, 15 years, they're not going to want to just leave and start again. You know what I mean? So that that's another main thing. For, for me when I was looking for it. So just make sure that you have the contract, okay? That protects you. They're gonna have a lot of contract that protects them. You just want the portion that protects you. Um, I'm trying to think what other questions. That was really it, I, I do believe, uh, in terms of, of that. Oh, another thing. The reason, how the, the question came with how do I sell my cars? I think I covered it, but let me be more direct. I hired a sales a salesperson. That person handles my cars, they sell my cars, they post my cars, they do everything for me. They now do everything for the whole dealership. So if someone's not there, they can call this individual and hey, can you show the car? And the same rules still apply, okay? Um, really and truly, guys, I feel like I went over everything for you. I have no problem ever answering your questions. There's just been such an influx of questions in regards to being a dealer rep or authorized agent. I felt like I had to do this again. All right. Um, there's a huge difference between between being a car flipper, someone who buys cars on Craigslist or Facebook and sells them versus being a car dealer or a dealer rep or authorized agent. The gap between being a car flipper and a car dealer is tremendous. Okay. If you have the opportunity to become a dealer rep and your goal is to own a dealership, I suggest you take it because the amount of information you're going to learn being a dealer rep is tremendous. And for those of you that are like me, I don't want to mess up my stuff. And I hate to say that I want to mess up anyone's stuff, but at least I'm there learning from other guys that know what they're doing, from other people that know what they're doing. And now, when and if I do venture out on my own, I am already that much, I'm already exposed to that much more. At this point, as I said in one of the last videos, I don't have any desire anymore to open up my own car dealership. I don't see the value in it, given my current deal. Given the fact that I can now get into buy here, pay here. Given the fact that I can <clears throat> now finance through another dealer. Um... If I get to the point where I'm selling 20 and 30 cars a month and, you know, 20, 20 to 30 cars a month, when you start doing the math on it, right? Let's just say you're, you're selling 20 cars a month. I'm collecting $200 either way, right? So that's $4,000 that I'm giving this guy. Well, at that point, it makes sense. Mathematically, it makes sense because, well, for two grand, I could own my own dealership. So that means I, I would keep two grand for myself and put two grand into paying all the bills. Once I hit that number, then that's something to, to discuss. If um, with the finance deal I have right now, it looks like it's gonna be 500 a car to finance it. If I get to the point where I'm financing 10 cars a month and I can have the same banks that they have, I'm believing when I tell you, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna learn that system too. I'm no dummy. Anytime I have an opportunity to learn anything, I learn it. I'll learn the banking system. I'll learn the financing portion of it, okay? I'll learn which banks are good. I'll learn all that stuff. Um, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I sell 10 cars over there. I'm paying them 500. 
That's five grand. I'm an idiot not to open up my own and get my own, um, my own uh, banks in line and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Also, I have an LLC. If you're suggest, if you're thinking about doing this, get an LLC because the 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 dealership that you're do the working for, at the end of the year they're gonna cut you a 1099 or what is it a W9 or something like that. Anyway, it's just gonna be this gross number of cars that you sold and the total amount of money. They're not gonna pay any money for you. So for you know easy math, you sold a hundred cars in a year, all of them at five thousand dollars. Less tax, title, registration, and the $200 dealer fee, okay? So they're not going to eat $50,000 in um, taxes. That's going to be on you. They're going to write you a 1099, and you're going to be responsible for fifty grand of income. So start at LLC. Start keeping all your receipts that pertain to the business, your fuel, the, the vehicle, the parts, the labor, the transportation, um, any pens, paper, whatever. That's between your cell phone, uh, promotions, ads that you ran, anything. That's between you and your accountant. Run it like a business so when you do start your own dealership, you already know all this stuff, okay? Because you do, the dealership's not going to pay your taxes, so you're going to get stuck with them. They're going to report to the IRS that you made this much money because they need to get that off their books. They're going to switch that off of them. Your monthly fees, that three fifty a month that I pay, that's 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 a write off. That's a fee that costs me to do business. That's between you know, I keep, I write a check from my LLC. I write a check. Um, I'll try to put a link below. I use LegalZoom. You can definitely do it for yourself. You can start an LLC for about $100 less than what LegalZoom charges, I believe. But for me, to have it done right was worth $100. Uh, could I have done it? Yeah, I probably could have. Would it take me more time? Absolutely. Would I be nervous every step of the way? Yes. So I spent the extra $100. It came out to be like $350. Bucks. I paid LegalZoom and within... I want to say 21 days, three weeks, I had my LLC up and running. Went to the bank, opened up a bank account, and just kept it moving like that. So I have a business credit card, I have a business checkbook, and I do. And it makes life a lot easier too. When you're getting parts delivered, I simply write a check and I leave it on the door. If I'm not there, they'll leave my part and take my check. You know what I mean? So I kind of try to mainstream this as much as possible. And we'll get into to running a business part later, how I run the business as a rep. But anyway, guys, I hope this helped you out. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I apologize. Um, thank you so much. I know my last video, I got a lot of hate for the comment I made about the stimulus. I'm still on the fence if I'm going to give it to them or not. But, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. I appreciate you watching. See you at the next one. That's my best friend.